Okay, we're live. You're live? Yes. <laughs> it's good to see you. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Can't get around there. Yeah. I know. You'll have to excuse us. We just got this just now. So oh, wow. we haven't even looked at it. Yeah. So we, Sorry. we have no, we don't know what's in it. <laughs> It'll be a few minutes. I know I gotta get through here. Uh huh. I know you're bigger. You're a little bigger than I am, yeah. <laughs> Just a wee bit. <sighs> Not by much. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good. Awesome. <laughs> Catch your breath. Slide that out. Name on the back. Mm -hmm. You want it out? Mm -hmm. You don't? Because I'm not married. Oh! <laughs> Mary is the uh, city council okay. member and I'm the planning commission. All right. Yeah, but thank you for the talk. Oh, yeah. That helps. Thanks, Dave. Of course. Yeah. <laughs>
going to call this meeting to order at 610. So we just got this stuff, so it's taking some time. We can stand to the flat streets. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I had a chance to read the agenda from uh, January 9th, the minute, minutes I mean from January 9th. Yes. Comments or corrections? I can't, I wasn't here. I wasn't here either. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Adams? What's up? The minutes from the last planning commission meeting look satisfactory to you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. We have a motion to set, please. So moved. Move that uh, the minutes from the January 9th, 2000. Uh, 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 be accepted. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Public hearing. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Byron Gums. I am the regional land use manager for the Yakima Valley Conference of Governments. We provide planning services for the city of Madison, and I am here in front of you today to present to you the staff report on the Castellanos annexation. Uh, the, the purpose of the, the hearing is to go over the facts and solicit public comment. Um, you will be having a recommendation or a resolution, if you will, to city council, whether to uh, approve or deny the, the request for the annexation. However, it is ultimately going to be city council's decision whether or not to approve the annexation. Um, in between your action that you take tonight and city council hearing it, the annexation is reviewed by the Yakima County Boundary Review Board. So they'll be looking through it and making sure that the um, all the paperwork's in order and the proper agencies on their end have been notified. Um, so with that being said, I'll, I'll get right to it. Um, we are here to receive comments on the proposed application from Mario Castellanos to annex text parcel 230806 24407 into the incorporated urban growth area of the city of Mapton. Uh, the comprehensive plan for this property is urban residential with the city of Mapton's proposed zoning being R1 low density residential. Uh, currently the, the site is unaddressed. It's 5.11 acres in size and located approximately a quarter mile west of the intersection of High School Road and Golden Road. So uh, the old old school where the couple of 90 degree turns are, it's just right there. Uh, it's currently a field with a bunch of solids that sprinklers in there. If you go, if you go by there today, um, it's generally flat, bounded by the high school road on the north, uh, vacant lands owned by Mapton School District to the west, and then residential and agricultural lands to the east, with a railroad right of way and State Route 22 to the south. The parcel is currently zoned by Yakima County as R1 single family residential and has the Mapton Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map designation as urban residential. Property and road rights of way are located within the city of Mapton's urban growth area with the exception of the railroad and state route 22 to the south. Uh, the, the process for an annexation, just to summarize real quick, is it starts with the property owner coming to city council and stating their intent to be annexed into the city. The council, if they agree to that, um, require the property owner to provide signatures of no less than 10% of the assessed value of the property owners in the area. Um, with, with that being submitted and being confirmed, the council holds another meeting saying that, they, uh, that that's been satisfied 
and directs the applicant or the, the property owner to collect signatures that would equal 60% assessed value of the area to be annexed. With Mr. Castellanos' property, it was really simple because it's one parcel and he owns all of it. Um, but it's still a step that needs to be done. After that petition with the 60% has been submitted to council, it then gets sent to the Yakima County Assessor, who then uh, performs a review to, and, and issues a piece of paper. It's called the Determination of Sufficiency, and they're verifying that that 60% threshold has been met or exceeded. After that's been completed, we have this hearing that we're here for this evening. After this evening, as I mentioned, um, your uh, action that you take on it, we then bring everything to the Boundary Review Board. They have a 45-day comment period. Once that 45-day comment period is up, comes back in front of City Council for them to take action on, and if they choose to accept it, it would be an adopting ordinance. And when that adopting ordinance is filed with the county auditor's office is when the boundary of the city limits would change if, if it is approved. Um, let's see. The city did request, so when we're going through annexation, the city requests simultaneous, simultaneous adoption of the city's zoning regulations consistent with the urban growth area future land use de designation, and that the city requires an assumption of the appropriate share of all existing city indebtedness by the area to be annexed. So that's where if the city has bonds that they're paying off for utilities and stuff like that, this newly annexed area will be responsible for paying its fair share towards so, um, those. The um, public notice for this hearing was mailed to property owners on, I believe it's June 6th, and then it was placed in the newspaper, the Sunnyside Sun, and the legal notice was published June 7th and June 14th, advertising this hearing this evening. Um, the, there weren't any comments that were in front of me when I finalized my staff report, but Yulia has indicated that there was a um, comment that was received by an interested party. If I could have that, I'll, I'll give it back. Um, we, should, we should have got a copy of that, but it was, I, I believe it was, it just came in. Today. Today. Yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Yeah. Um, it's from a Mr. and uh, Bill. Ro Rocher? Rodger. 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 Um, Rodger. And it's a letter in opposition to the annexation. He lists uh, several concerns here, one being the amount of acreage within the city limits. And he mentions when the city annexed the flower company, they annexed from Fern Street to Allison Road, which was everything east of 6th Street, plus uh, a little more. There's approximately 10 acres north of the grade school, approximately seven and a half acres between Euclid and High School Road, and approximately five acres along Boundary Road between Pine Street and Rose Street. There are multiple lots which are already within the city limits, does not include the 60 acres um, with 20 being off High School Road and 40 off Vance Road and Euclid Road that is owned by the school district and annexed within the city limits. Uh, comment relating to Water, City of Mefton has water issues and shortages for multiple years. It's understood that the city will be drilling for water sometime this year, but it's not a guarantee that water will be hit. And there are already numerous new houses being built at this time with this water shortage. City, or the need for water already exceeds the current residents. Uh, third comment is that the uh, more question, is the city prepared for extra cost to maintain high school road to set parcel? So would include repairing, line repainting along the snow removal, and the letters finished with a statement that there's not ample water for the city to grow into all of the current acreage that they have within the city limits at this time. Uh, with all this land within city limits without ample water supply, um, why would the city consider annexing five more acres? Even if the water problems were met, there is ample acreage lots that have already been annexed or are already within the city limits to fulfill the need of residential growth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, 
So with, uh, as part of this process, the, um, the engineering firm that handles the water and sewer for City of Mab did, did review this and say that there was sufficient capacity for water and sewer. Um, the, the caveat is that the utilities are about, four, I want to say 1,400 to 1,800 feet away in High School Road, which the developer would be responsible for extending to the site. Um, but uh, that would be something that would be, the, the, the extension of utilities would be considered at time of development of the lot. At this time, we're just simply looking at whether or not this five acres should be in the city limits. Um, current zoning is R1 single family residential, as I mentioned. Uh, current use is agricultural on the undeveloped lot. Characteristic of the properties adjacent to the property. To the north is agricultural lands under Yakima County jurisdiction. To the south is um, rights of way that's under Yakima County jurisdiction. To the east is R1 low density residential and agricultural uses under Yakima County jurisdiction. And to the west, the zoning is public facilities and that's vacant and agricultural uses and that's within the city of Mapton. That's that high school property, um, school district property. Um, the, the, within the comprehensive plan, there is a, a land use element which identifies the, the existing and future needs of the city of Manhattan based on growth rates and so forth. And it's determined that there's a future residential need of 18 acres with the city of Manhattan. Um, and this, this would go towards that need. Um, the goals of the comprehensive plan that this would be meeting, uh, goal one is to create a balanced community by controlling and directing growth in a manner that enhances rather than detracts from the community quality, community quality and values. Uh, policy that in its land use management decisions, the city should strive to influence both rates and patterns of future growth in order to achieve the goals of the comprehensive plan. Goal two, to pursue well-managed orderly expansion of the urban area. Policy 2.1 being the future land use map adopted in this, in this plan shall establish the future distribution, extent, and location of generalized land uses. Goal four, to actively influence the development of unincorporated growth area in a manner that minimizes adverse impacts upon the city and its residents with policy 4.5 being annexations of areas within the UGA shall take place only after consultation by the city with residents of the areas proposed for annexation. Um, the, there aren't any critical areas in the area, no, no floodplain or flood hazards. There's no shorelines related to the Yakima River in this area, no known critical areas present on site. Um, because there's no development proposed at this time, there wasn't a need for any sort of traffic and con traffic concurrency management, which is essentially a traffic study to see if the existing roads can handle any sort of proposed development. And then <clears throat> there's no need to address any sort of development standards because there isn't any uh, development that's proposed at this time. Um, as far as water and sewer, as I mentioned, they do not currently serve this site. Uh, however, there has been a determination by the engineering firm that works for the city that there is sufficient capacity in the sewer and water systems to serve future development on the assumption of 23 homes being created, which is what the property owner has indicated they would like to do to the site is develop it with 23 homes. Um, new utility lines serving future development would be required to be installed in a manner that creates a looping system, essentially so the utilities don't have a dead end, so there's constant flow and there isn't stagnant water. Um, streets, the, the parcel served by High School Road, which is currently paved. The roadway is outside the city of Mapton. Uh, future development in the area may require improvements to those roads, including additional right-of-way. That would all be looked at upon time of application for a subdivision. Um, in reviewing the proposed annexation and the, the identified needs of the community through the comprehensive plan, 
it is uh, recommended that the proposed annexation be approved and the property be zoned R1 low density residential. And if there's any questions, I'd be willing to entertain them. Well, yes, um, I'm sort of interested. But what is the nearest connection point for fresh water and for the sewer? I believe they are near the old high school. I don't have a, a map in front of me. Well, I'd be interested in, in the cost of that. Mm -hmm. It's substantial. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know, so initially, uh, and Mr. Castellanos is here. I can afford it. And, and he, he is aware that initially he had uh, applied to develop the land for Yakima County. And in order for it to pencil out or make sense, um, with the, the city's requirements, they will not provide water and sewer outside of city limits. He decided to request the annexation rather than developing a private water system on the site. So th there, there is uh, a distance of, was it 1,400? 1,800 feet, linear, lineal feet of water and sewer that need to be extended down high school road. Has that already been determined? 1,800 yes. feet? Yes. That is a line for the sewer and a line for the fresh water. Yes, correct. And I'll take the responsibility to get it all done. Is the, is the fresh water going to be domestic or do they still have irrigation or it's, it's lawns and stuff? It's city water and they have irrigation. Irrigation is right there. Where it's already it's available. City water what? It would be city water for the for the it's pot the potable is, water for the potable water. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And irrigation for the water. Two, two separate um, utilities, if you will. So the the domestic water would in, in be this, uh, for the irrigation of lawns. Number three, right here, it sort of implies to me that where it says the city requires the assumption of an appropriate share. It almost sounds like you guys put the pipe in and send us the bill. No, so so this is that's for the, the existing city indebtedness. So the city likely has municipal bonds and loans and things like that. What what your property taxes in the city pay for your services? It's saying that when they come into the city, they're going to have to shoulder that fair cost as well. So the 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 extension of the lines and everything, that's required to be, uh, the costs are required to be borne by the developer. That would be a conditional approval for the subdivision. So basically you will get, be benefiting by getting taxes from us. We so won't get any taxes until we live on Yeah. Okay. And, and that also brings up the, the question of uh, do we have enough well water to support you just said 22 yes. more homes? The great, I believe it's Gray and Osborne does your engineering services and, and they've reviewed the capacity and said yes, there, there is capacity for 23, the assumption of 23 homes being built on site. The last people, when they put that new well in, told us we were going to get, I think, 400 gallons a minute. And we ended up getting 200 gallons. So I, I don't know if there's enough or not. I don't know if this big tank has ever been filled. I, I don't have an answer to that. You, you finished with your part? Yes, sir. Anybody else for for talking about the uh, annexation, gentlemen, or for something else? We're here. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the water is a question. You know, if there'll be sufficient water, maybe communication with the person who did the study, or you were said you were short. Oh, would you four gentlemen introduce yourself, please? Uh, Clint Oliver, um, Claude, Claude Oliver, Tri Cities Realty Group. 
And your name is what? Claude Oliver. I served you for 30 years in public service, so before I got here. So. Okay, I mean, I've heard the name before. And the two gentlemen in the rear? Mario Castellanos. Uh, we're one of the owners of the property. Yes, that is correct. And the fourth one? Jose Antonio. Antonio. Yes. Castellanos. No, he's just a friend of mine. All right. Um, I suppose you know Mr. Rector. What's that? I suppose you know Mr. Rector. No, I've heard some rumors that uh, the the people involved in this were trying to cut a deal on getting the old school. Is that anybody's intention? What do you mean? Did, did it say in the notes somewhere? It's I was like to say, we just got this right now. Does it say in the notes somewhere that you're interested in purchasing the Yes, school? that is correct. We are interested in buying the old high school. You're in, are you in, in, uh, I don't know, in line to make a deal to buy it or negotiating to buy it or? The, uh, the old high school has tremendous community potential. Um, we met, had extensive meetings with the school district and because they had had a bond levy failure in January and February, they did not want to raise any issues at this time. Um, looking at the, the old high school, uh, it's a beautiful site. The current owner is going back on some old uh, initiatives to see what they want to do. And if they don't get it done, we told them we're in line, ready to go. And what is the significance to the old high school to this development? None. 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 It's None. two separate issues. Correct. Uh, but it was just indicated to us that the water connection is on the property of the old high school. Is that right? No, it's no. right next to it. Right next to it. Okay. To the high range. What would be your intentions via the new high school, if I may ask? Or the old high school, not the new high school. That, the the old high school. Um, right now it's the clean it. We already went and clean it once and we erase all the graffiti. I don't want to build brand new houses and then have that type of home or you know property there with all that graffiti and all that stuff that's going on at night you know i would love to grab it clean it make something happen for the community what will that be we don't know until we get there but i don't want to have, have brand new homes next to that type of property right because um yeah you know but that should not affect whether we buy it or not, that should not affect uh, any of the question. Was, what do you mean by that kind of property? It's run down. It's run down. It has graffiti all over. Uh, we already went and did our, uh, clean, clean it once. We just don't want graffiti there we'll next to our properties. Anything else here? Bill, you want to take that? Well, I have a huge question on the amount of property that the city already has annexed in. Grafton School District, you've worked there for 50 years. You've been here for 50 years. You were here for 12, 14 years. I've been here all my life. Then here they annexed in 60 acres of property within the city limits. And every time they've ever built, they built on the same property they're on right now. And if land is going to go for $315,000 for every five acres, I could see the school maybe selling some property off. You know, because what, what use would they have? And then at the same time that you purchased Mr. Smith's land, the land right across the road, 7.5 acres, next to the Catholic addition or Bill Flowers property. Mm -hmm. It sold for two hundred and seventy thousand. It was seven point five acres, and so it, it, this whole thing ain't making sense to me. You know, and I have a gentleman that lives right next to a five point eleven that you're trying to annex in. I have horses. I got cows. I can see twenty three homes 
75 kids, uh, probably 70 adults, 100 cars. I mean, it's mapped it. And that's what it would look like. Fourth of July. Great. What would Fourth of July be like? Jim. World War III. Okay. I got a $20,000 horse. One firecracker goes up in the air. What's that horse going to do, Steve? Oh, you're just wooden, right? You're just set there and take it. No, well, mine will do the same. You know, I just, for the life of me, I don't see why Mapton City needs this 5.11 acres. Acres. If they, when they annex the flower shop in, all that property, do you realize the flower shop sold, what, two times now, Jim? It's two times. Okay. They're not farming half the ground there. Valtice Farms is. So how long before that annexed property is vacant and weeds? Yeah. Like I said, there's so much property around right next to me. I, if Mapton had a Safeway store coming in here, a uh, medical facility, uh, hell, even a bar. We don't even have a bar. Come in, I can see, okay, it's growing. Do we need 75 more homes in this community? Heck yeah. I can build your bar. That's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it. I, I can do it. You people have been in the community. You know what I'm talking about. We don't even have a bank no more. Uh, you know, uh, and what quality of home are you going to put in? If it was like Grand Ridge Estates coming out of Grand Ridge Grandview, hey, that nice brick wall along my fence line, I would love it. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Oh, I need to see that right. Well, and well, all those nice, right. beautiful homes, yeah. Whatever, if I make a promise, I'll keep it. That's guaranteed. But those homes are selling regardless for half if it's a, regardless if it's a next or not a next, there's still gonna be houses I, there. I, I the second that. thing is I can't make a half a million dollar home because the people in this community can't afford those half a million dollar homes. Okay, so you build a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar yes, home. Yes, of course. And then one thing I, I feel you never thought of, and Steve Smith will verify this. The railroad tracks. You're gonna be what? Less than 100 yards from the tracks. How many homes do you see built along the railroad tracks between here, Toppenish, and Prosper? None. That's why we're going to have our engineer develop a right way to do it. Like you said, we might put a wall in there. Like you spoil the wall next well, to yours. I'm telling you, what, 2.33 in the morning, the whistle goes off. Again, about 4 in the morning, the whistles go off. And my home is off the road. Or off the tracks quite a ways. The house rumbles. Steve's told me his rumbles. Mine does. Mine does. How long have you been there? Me? Yeah. 16 years. See? It doesn't affect when you. I, when it I moved affect... It, no, when I moved there, the tracks were, they were dead. I know, but it doesn't affect they... you right now. It shouldn't affect the rest of the people. Why would it affect no. the I'm, rest of the people? Then another thing. Kids. Kids in training. This I was on the fire department. Fire chief for years. I can just see some little six or seven year old kid, unless you've got a wall barrier keeping the. We will. <laughs> if, if, if I may, a lot of these concerns. So, this is just to get the prop, those five acres into the city. This process will have to be repeated for the subdivision. And, and that's where all of these comments and concerns are more appropriately going to be addressed. Any more comments or needed information? Well, the first phone calls I got on this property was a Mapton High School graduate who was working for the uh, welding outfit in Sunnyside. He wanted to get something in town. And so we know there's a pent up need for folks that grow up, graduate here, they'd like to stay here. And that's one of those levels of helping them fit uh, in the valley is doing a little project like this and something that else that happens this gentleman's raising an excellent concern where where's it coming from where's it going you start with a baby step you don't start with 100 homes out here priced at a half a million dollars you start with what you can do 20 homes and as you step into that 
you look and see what the market says about your community and wants to do. And one of the things you'll, you'll I think, get a very pleasant surprise is there's a lot of local interest to stay local when they can. And so we want to help that uh, with our project because, you know, we know we're going to have to fit in with their financial needs uh, for doing the package. And it's a beautiful little community uh, with lots of potential. You don't want to take huge steps. You want to take baby steps. And this is a nice baby step. What was it? Go ahead. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I would like you, if you can please read that. That is my daughter. She was raised right here. Okay. And she had a little bit something to say for us. And if you can somebody read it for us, that would be she's in the Navy right now. And somebody somebody can read it just a little bit. That way they can understand a little bit more about us. Hi, my name is Michaela. I would like to say a couple things on behalf of my father. I graduated in 2019 from Mapton High School. And my only goal while there was to leave. And I did. I joined the military and left. It has been no secret these last couple of years have been rough on my family. But we have been striving to give back to and grow our community. We have done Genoa's scholarship these last few years and hope to improve the community. My dad's plan is to annex the land on High School Road will not only grow the community, but make it a better place. Sorry. Or, or do you live here? Tri Cities. Yeah, well, my kids were raised here. Mm -hmm. My daughter is in the Navy. My son is in the Navy. Uh, and my other daughter, she's yes. in Washington State University. She was married to Angie. And Ella Farina. Yes. Yeah. There's another comment as well from Myra. Good afternoon. My name is Myra with Summit Funding, and I work with the community on a daily basis. There is a shortage of affordable housing in this area. Oh, that's it. Those are the only two comments. Anything else? All I can say for myself personally is I wish I would have got this before so I could get prepared because I'm not prepared in and I don't think anybody was prepared to, to hear this tonight. So I, I'll have comments from, from the rest of you that feel comfortable one way or another right now. So if you're not comfortable with the decision tonight, we have the right to postpone this at another time. If you ask me for my comment, uh, Everybody knows, obviously, it's been pointed out that I have a huge conflict of interest here. Thanks for pointing that out, Bill. That Mastern can only grow one way, and that's east. Everything else, north, west, and south, it's in the urban growth area. It's been there for many years. Everybody knows it. Sooner or later, Mastern is going to grow. They waited for the water and the sewer to be developed. It's done. As residents right outside of the proposed area, we don't particularly want another housing tract there, but we knew that going in. The city is going to grow that way, whether we like it or not. And I don't think it's, I don't think we can shut it down just because we're comfortable having our own private area, if you will. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. It can't go anywhere else, it's going to happen. Whether it's in my lifetime or Bill's or not, I don't know. But I have to represent what I believe is the best for the community, not myself. They've demonstrated that they have the infrastructure to do it. Mario's done everything according to what he's been asked to do. So I don't know how else we could make a decision any other way but to approve it. Additional comments? What's that? Any additional comments? No, I'm just... 
will run in my mind. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I have mixed feelings. Um, I, I, I sympathize with Mr. Redker's um, concerns uh, because, like everyone, uh, we always panic a little bit at growth because we cannot see into the future. We cannot see what it will be or what it will not be. Um, I think we're afraid of what it will not be. And if it were to be accomplished uh, as successfully as Mr. Cassiano has portrayed it, um, I think uh, it, it is the future, whether it happens this year or 20 years down the road, it is the future. But, uh, and I know we have a significant shortage of housing, and I know we have a significant loss of young talent because we don't have housing. And I also know that Mapton has a lot of potential. Um, I certainly would not want to move to Sunnyside um, because of the particular issues that they deal with in Sunnyside. But, and I, I'm very comfortable here, obviously, because I'm still here uh, seven, how many, how many years? 13 years after I retired, I'm still here. So um, I, I'm conflicted. Uh, as I said, I sympathize with Mr. Rector. I understand status quo, wanting to keep that country feeling. I love it. I particularly love it. Can, can I ask you a question, Bill? If you yes. failed to break the wall between your place and that room. And, and his... If it looked like what's on Grand Ridge Estate, uh -huh. I don't know if any of you have seen yeah. that, well, that would just be beautiful. Uh -huh. But to build a $250,000 home and build a million dollar fence, now, would that, that <laughs> wouldn't be a problem? A fence between this director that would be a problem. And between the railroad in yes. yours. Because the rail, that would also act as a noise barrier for the people in that park. Right. That would not be a problem. Well, okay. Well, just just to reiter, reiter, excuse me, reiterate, that's something that would be considered at the time of application sure. for a subdivision. So it's something that can be discussed, but it shouldn't be any part of a uh, conditional approval or anything like that for an annexation. That's putting the cart in front of the horse. Tell me something. When uh, I see that Natchez just went through this on a parcel. Okay. No, let me. How many um, land use changes? come before your organization and how many of them are disapproved um so as, as far as like rezones and annexations and things like that are you asking um uh, a fair number i think the the lion's share this past couple of years has been grandview they've gone through let's say three or four different annexations a number of um not only comprehensive plan future land use map changes, but uh, rezones as well. Union Gap has had them, Tiatin has had them, but the, the Natchez is, it's kind of apples and oranges. So what Natchez was trying to do is enlarge their urban growth area. This property is already in the urban growth area. They were, they were out of residential lands that were in the urban growth area that had willing developers. So they were trying to add lands to the urban growth area because you're not allowed to annex land into your city if it isn't in the urban growth area. So that's so the Natchez process was an emergency urban growth area expansion. So it's a, it's a little bit different creature, but um, I have not disproved any of them. They've, they've all been recommended for approval. A lot of the standards that you're reviewing what it boils down to is there a community need for it and the the fact that people are wanting to develop these lands shows that there is the, the community need and desire for the um increased development in those communities Pe people want to live on the east side um 
and there's another property north of the old high school. It's a, it's a, I don't know the property owner's name. I know it's another Mario, um, but they're proposing um, 30 some lots for that parcel as well. So there, there's an identified need for housing development in the city of Neptune. People are wanting to build homes. There's another one that's across from yeah, you know, the South, South Street. There's a place there that they said 20 some homes, and then out in that area, 20 some homes, and back on 6th Street, there was an area that wanted a bunch of homes. So I don't, I don't know where the other one is out there. Um, the, the one I'm just referencing, I want to say it's probably that seven and a seven, seven and a half acres, right? Half acres where the Catholics built their housing project, yeah, yeah, right next to it. It's, it's, already, it's already to the east, of the yes, Catholic. it's already yeah. annexed in all the water and sewer subbed off right there. See, we were led to understand it was out there, it was not across the place. We got. Yeah, the, the, the old school. Thank you. Um, on the uh, Yakima Valley Council Economic Development, they were looking at distributing significant dollars throughout the county, and this was kind of a gray, un, undefined area. And what they were looking at was community improvement, so that a contractor contractor could go through and make a series of community improvements have you taken any action on that I'm so far? I haven't been involved with that aspect okay. of things. So, so my role is uh, land use planning for the different cities that fall under. Okay. And then one of the things we looked at at the old high school, and I talked to the superintendent about that, and you're concerned about the land that the schools have, putting it properly to work. And our concern was, could we extend out the property line straight out so we would have something that would allow the high school to economically develop, whether or not it would be a community center, whether or not it'd be a community church, uh, whether or not uh, it'd be a relocation for the Mapton City Hall. Uh, that could be a possibility. Uh, so, you know, it's one step at a time. You can't do it all at once. Somebody didn't show up with their checkbook and say, here's a million bucks. Go what, see what you can do in Mapton. Well, I guarantee you what we could do. But there are some one-step processes that are very close uh, to helping everybody out uh, really do what they would like to do. Um, as soon as the owner of the uh, old high school building gets done with sizing up a couple of opportunities, uh, we're back at him because we've already written up a contract for him and uh, we'd like to move on it. And there are some levels, not just showing up to Mapton and, and uh, making a buck, but being 30 years of public service, there are some ways the uh, economic development uh, issues for the Yakima County. This is an area that needs uh, some identified support, community support services. Uh, that you don't normally do, but they're looking at a pile of money uh, and they're looking at allocating uh, that money to go to projects. And a lot of the folks in town need some help. They really, you know, whether it's a new roof, whether it's uh, put replace some broken windows, uh, there could be a community initiative uh, that you guys could initiate by endorsing the concept and asking folks to see if they would get their oars in the water and help make a community improvement plan because that needs to need to be done. And it once you got going on that, it'd be amazing uh, the amount of people that would be getting help from that. So um, superintendent would like us to talk to him about that land extension for the old high school. As soon as the current owner gets done with this initiative, um, we're ready to go back and knock on the door, okay? That's one of those help points in the community uh, that needs to happen. You can't do it all at once, but you can do some baby steps. You need, need to do some baby steps. Uh, the other thing was the uh, farm workers, too. 
next they had a large tract of land, I don't know, nine acres next to the nursery there. It's right over right here. Yeah. yeah. Right. right over there. Right. It was on the reservation. It's been turned over to the city. Okay. So with that land, we'd like to talk to you about some possibilities with that land. Uh, because farm workers was looking at uh, doing uh, some um, uh, senior retirement. Yes, it was supposed to be a clinic, senior retirement, right? Uh, affordable right. housing. Yeah. Uh, community center, I believe. A community yes. center, yeah. Yeah, that that would we okay that four or five years ago. Basically. Wow. Yeah. Wow. With so what we could do by building the homes next to the old high school would be to come back and knock on your door to put up the flag of support saying you'd like to see the community integrate some services at the old high school and in the process of doing that that would let us invite farm workers back to town for a clinic and or a community center or some other support levels but like i say you you've got to take these steps one step at a time we're one of those steps our little housing project is one of those steps, and then others will step up, and we hope uh, make some great things happen in that. Yeah, my question on the old high school that is on the historical register, and I've been led to believe it's off the historical register and could be tore down in Holmesville. But well, exactly. But if you took the old the old high school. And it's not on the historic register, so you can do some things with it. There were seven, several hundred thousand dollars worth of monies available if you went the historic route. But then once you go the historic route, you're locked in, you're locked in, you're locked in. you got to have somebody with that other million bucks uh, helping you uh, build it out. But at the same time, we would have the ability with your support uh, to knock on the door of the Yakima County Economic Development uh with a project plan and ask their support uh for consideration for some things but again you got to take that baby step and uh there's some really really awesome things can happen i i think of a big starbucks but on the other hand <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I'm, you do it'd be um, interesting sir if you know we're hearing this but if you give us an outline in in, in you know, in, in paper form or email form or something so that we can make sense of that. Give me the, the communication to Mapton and then you'll distribute. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, love to. And, uh, you know, again, put your thinking cap it, on. It's, ask it's Yakima in, but I don't know if it's going to stay in. <laughs> well, that's true. Mr. But, Mr. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. What's your timeline? Because uh, as you've heard, we've had some proposals to build and uh, uh, and proposals for farm workers and, and they don't materialize. Oh, all I'm waiting is for the annexation. All I'm waiting is for the proofs. I am ready the next day. Yeah, it's about six months. I mean, I'm not going to be spending all this money just to get it annexed and then just leave it there. Yeah. I am ready for the next day. And you know, you know what? We first heard about this proposal about six months ago. No, not this one. No, this, uh -uh. Uh -uh. it's different. different Same one. piece of land. No, no, no. no. Oh. The piece of land before, that's what I thought too, that we were misled. It's the one uh, on the other side of the Catholic yeah. houses there. Yeah. That open field, yeah. which is. It's is already it was annexed in years ago. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that was um, when the developer of that land had their consultant here, PLSA, and were giving you information on it. But they, they had an officially uh, submitted applications. I've seen um, some preliminary drawings, preliminary plats, things like that. But they a, an official application hasn't been submitted for that subdivision. I'm trying to work with Yuli to get. Uh, we were led to believe that it was on the other side of how high school road, instead of on the, the north side of high school road. Okay, I, yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry about that. I mean, I'm ready to develop. I've been waiting for you. you know over a year already. Uh, Thank you. 
I'm gonna throw my heart into it. Not just yeah. for the money, not for my daughter and for my kids. I made him a promise, I'm gonna keep it. And all I need is your help. Okay, any other comments before? Okay. A friend of mine looks at property online all the time. You've got that property listed, that 5.11 acres, for $570,000. Correct? Correct. So you're selling it. No. I think with COVID, you look at our application date when it came in, okay, and a lot of communities stopped meeting. They they stopped projects like this. This just popped up. Didn't that? Uh, what, Mario, what was the date of our application? I think it was February of last February, year. Last year. February last year. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. So we we've, we've been here a while. We've been here for a while. I mean, so why do you have it for sale if you're going to build all these homes? Question. Because I can either develop it or I can sell the lots. Correct. One or the other. All right. Yeah. What's in what your is preference? Huh? In your preference? I'd rather develop it myself. But I can't wait for 20 years yeah. to develop it. I can't. My money's all tied up right yep. there. I already waited for over a year and I've done the paperwork since day one, since the day I purchased it. But I don't see any help from the city. Okay? But I can't stay forever with my money just sitting in that piece of land. You give me the okay, I start the next day. Any other comments? Hear a motion whether to uh, recommend annexation or not to the city council. No motion? Well, it kind of once we'll do it again. I recommend that we approve case okay, annexation. Moved in. I'll you recommend what second that, that annexation? Mm -hmm. It's been moved and second that we annex this. Um, Lots uh, 230806 to 24407. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. You still have a few steps to go. Yeah. <laughs> and one, of the things, one of the things that Mr. Castellanos has explored is an early transfer of jurisdiction. So once this goes to the boundary review board, if city council is willing, and works with the county the, the city can start processing the subdivision application to help speed things along. Thank you. Okay. Any additional new business that we need to that's everything. So moved. Moved it, please, any other comments or discussions? Thank you.